velocity. When do you think we will get to like the, the um, longevity escape velocity, which is of course where for every year you, you live, then your expected lifespan increases by another year. Yeah, um, I really don't know, Richard. And uh, we obviously, we have some predictions um, in the world. Some people say like in 10 years from now, we're going to have this longevity escape velocity moment. Uh, or some other people say, you will say it's by 2040. I do believe, like if you ask me, I do believe that in 20 years from now, we will have all the science and all the technology for human life extension. And it's not going to be immortality. I'm not a big fan of immortality anyway. It's going to be a series of your own health, uh, health extension and life extension decisions. So like every three, five, seven years, not every year, like concept of longevity escape velocity suggests, you're going to be making decision if you're going to be taking the benefits of this new technology and new science, which arrived and available for everyone. But like, so coming back to your question, we're going to be ready technically, technologically, and um, from scientific perspective in 20 years from now. But then the biggest obstacles are going to be in the field of uh, human ethics and regulation. And that's, that's my biggest concern. Like if you ask people all around the world, <clears throat> if they want to extend their lifespan, 60 to 80% of people, depending on the country, say no. So we've created technology to extend our life, but we haven't created life. That we want to extend and that's and this goes you know, it comes down to inequality gaps it comes down to our relationship with mother nature we we are irresponsible in, in this relationship it comes down to social constructs that we have like you know all of these social constructs that we have in this world has been developed for the world where the average human lived for uh 35 years uh, and all these binary things like um lifelong career uh, uh, full-time job, full-time retirement, uh, marriage. Um, like two-thirds of the marriages go through divorce in the first five, seven years uh, after uh, the date of marriage, depending on the country you're looking at. But this is two-thirds. And um, uh, or, uh, you know, this whole concept of like, you know, full-time work and then full-time retirement is just against the human nature. You're not, you know, churning, you know, you know becoming inactive uh, uh, in just kind of one day when you turn 65 or 67 or whatever the number is. Uh, people would like to be a part of the community, society, of their working environment, and would like to contribute, right? Probably not at the level they they've done it in a different period of their life, but uh, this is really important. So we just this whole you know, binary things, they convert people from uh, assets to liabilities in, in one day. And, and this is the huge problem because the yeah, um, year of your retirement is actually one of the most dangerous years in your life in terms of uh, mortality risks. Yes. Right. So, I mean, I actually, because I, I see, um, I don't know whether we'll be ready socially because there's so oh, many yeah. other changes like coming. Like AI, so you have self-driving cars, you have robots. And so the, the whole nature of work is going to change. There's, there's so many changes coming in the next two decades. And, and this would just be another one of those changes. And it's really not clear how the social status is going to continue. Yeah, 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 I agree. Well, that's why the uh, last chapter in the book before bonus chapter on what you can change right now so which is very important so it's called morality of immortality and it's really it's just dedicated to the ethics of longer living and for me it's the, one of the most fascinating subjects yes uh, that's going to be really important and, uh, because yeah as you get older how how can you continue to be contribute and, and how things so one like la little question just before we go so have you read the book uh super intelligence by nick bostrom so uh, no so he, he he looks at he just as you i i think you think that um immortality well not immortality but uh longevity is inevitable because you know we, we yeah. know how to do it and so it will happen he thinks that super in super artificial intelligence will also happen because it's just a logical progression of where we're going. And then that would become a major, like it would be a major 
danger for us. But you don't see artificial intelligence as you, you see us as working yes. with it rather than against it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So I, I, this is you know, very typical for every human being. So we tend to think, we tend to see the world in, in, in black and white, in binary terms, right? So it's either us, human intelligence, or them, like computer intelligence or artificial intelligence. And like looking back, we always find a way to integrate the most powerful technologies in, in our lives. So, you know, I, I do believe that the choice of the future is integration between man and machine rather than disintegration and then competition. But it comes down to it comes down to much more you know, philosophical view of the world, my you know, overall level of optimism, which is always excessive. So um, uh, you just need to be careful with uh, my thinking on that. But I, I don't think we, it's very typical for humans to see the threat. But uh, I do believe we'll manage to convert it in uh, coexistence and therefore like integration of the best of two worlds. Right. Yes, that would be really good. If we're looking at the far term horizon, so what's your thinking for how long it will take to kind of when that starts? Yeah. And what are some of the technologies that you see as being really uh, impactful there? Mm -hmm. So this, this whole concept of like near horizon of longevity innovation and far horizon of longevity innovation, this is just a framework, right? Mm -hmm. And like every frame, framework, it simplifies the reality or our prediction about future. So we all need to understand that. But then if you look at, you know, in the look, if you use this lenses, so for me, far horizon of longevity innovation will happen in the next 25 to 50 years. Well, having said that, some of the technologies that I'm going to mention in a minute, you, you've seen today, like they are in development today. And I'm talking about the world where man and machine will become one. I do believe if we want to live beyond 150 years on this planet, it's not good. We, we couldn't just do it in our current biological form. It's going to be integration of our biological view on human body and mind and engineering view of, uh, uh, on that. So uh, technologies like human avatars, both robotic ones and, and virtual ones as well, human brain AI integration. So that's important. That's you know, coming back to your previous question, Richard, on integration between the uh, human intelligence and, and artificial intelligence uh, as well. Um, we're all going to be full of sensors. I'm full of sensors today, as you can see. Yeah, I'm also wearing my continuous glucose monitor here and uh, some other things as well. But we're all going to be full of sensors. They're going to be embedded and uh, we're going to be interconnected. I call it Internet of Bodies. Similar to Internet of Things, the concept that we all know when you know, all of the material things are interconnected, in, you know, our body is going to be interconnected as well. Through And, and we're going to be part of AI run decentralized system, which would monitor our health and uh, will, you know, really help us to, to manage so many health risks that we're facing uh, while living on this planet. Uh, it's going to be nanobots like, uh, you know, small devices uh, of the nanoscale flowing inside our blood or other liquids uh, attacking um, cancer cells, uh, et cetera. So, uh, the future is like you know super uh, different from what we know about now. But again, as I'm saying, I do think that technologically and scientifically we're going to be ready in this 20 or 25 years. Uh, in terms of uh, um, social acceptance of that and and regulation, I'm not sure if we're going to be there. Right. So, but once you get to that point then i mean it's not immortality because nothing lasts forever yeah. But it, yeah it is indefinite i guess life life would be a choice or i guess death yeah 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 destiny. of course yeah but then then it's it's just another ethical issue mm -hmm. as well and it's a fascinating one like it, today if you if you're making a choice to live or to die like we are discussing a choice that we're going to have in the future it's called suicide or playing God in so many societies around the world. And, uh, and even if, if this is going to be socially acceptable, will I have a bravery to make this decision for myself? I don't, I don't really know. 
<laughs> well, as we see, like future has a lot of questions, not necessarily the answers for us. But it's 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 amazing kind of topics and subjects just to think through and and realize that. And it's the message of the book: we're all going to be living longer or radically longer, mm-hmm. and. Uh, we just need to rethink so many aspects of our life, our health strategy, financial strategy, like our social strategy, career, education, our relationship with medicine. It's time to take back control and responsibility for our own health. Right. Yes. And I certainly see that. And especially like for medicine, like precision medicine and uh, kind of individualized medicine is something that we could do now. Basically, we have the technology for it but it's just not the way the health system is set up. Unless mm-hmm. like you, yeah. you, you kind of take control and you have all these sensors and, yeah. um, and a supportive doctor who helps you <laughs> look at the yeah. sensors. Yeah, I sensors. agree with you, Richard. So I actually do believe that there's very little um, uh, commitment to change inside the uh, current system. And uh, the change will come from the outside. It's going to be new players. I don't know whether it's going to be big tech or small tech, uh, but obviously, it's going to be much more data-driven, technology-based, and uh, who knows? Uh, it might be the case that Apple, Microsoft, Google uh, will become uh, largest healthcare companies uh, in the world. I'm not so. In, I'm not saying this is great or this is bad, but it might be the case. Yes, yes, it may well. Okay, so okay, thank you so much. You've been uh, very, uh, very generous with your time, and it's been great talking to you. So. Uh, Yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you very much, Richard. And for those who would like to stay connected, you can uh, go to sergeyyoung.com, sign up for our newsletters. Like every month, we bring in you the news from the field of science um, of longevity or just uh, order the book. And uh, if you order the book, we have an amazing offer on sergeyyoung.com. You'll get an access to Video Longevity Academy and, and a couple of other books like on kids' health, on the diet uh, as well. Um, so I'm, I'm passionate about so many things in, in the world of health. Thank so, you. So if you order it through Amazon, uh, you can then get this access to the Academy? Uh, yeah, yeah. So basically what you do is like you order the book, uh, like whatever platform you want to mm-hmm. use, it's, it should not be only Amazon. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, you go to the website, sergeyyoung.com, and you claim the offer. You just like put details of your like order number from any platform, and you get you know, free access to Longevity Video Academy. It's 12 videos, 10 minutes each video, where I, I explain the whole story of you know, different horizons, different technologies, what you can, today, you can do today, what are the ethics of the future. So that's one. And two other books, one on, on a healthy diet principles, and I'm father of four kids, so I, I wrote a smaller book on um, uh, kids' health, uh, how to teach our kids to make healthy choices as early as possible before they face this whole wave of influence from advertising, you know, big food and uh, big pharma and uh, social media. Excellent. Now, that sounds brilliant. Um, so thank you for sharing that and making that available. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you, Richard. Thanks, everyone. Stay healthy and happy.